Yeah. So oh. there's, there's the microseconds average, and then also microseconds average. So ah. 4. Uh, 4. 4.3 milliseconds and uh, 0. Uh, 0.68. Yeah. This is Uring, and yeah. this is competitive. Yeah. Compet yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there he is, the man, yeah. the myth, the legend. Hey, yeah. how are you? <laughs> Welcome to the booth. So, we have a couple of things to showcase. Also, ah. in the mall, we have a couple of things. And we also have testing booths. So if you want to try fiddle around a little yeah. bit with the booth keyboard, play CS, whatever. Play we also have fellow rental stalls. So, if you want to play that, we can also do that. Ah, okay. Ah, and that is analog tester. Yes, yeah. yes, because uh, we thought like maybe it's a fun thing to just be a little bit ballsy. Any keyboard out there can bring this along and just test how it compares with speed and everything to the booting. Ah. Yeah, hey, I think this is going to be interesting for you. This is something we haven't shown a whole lot of. This is the latest sample and probably... Very heavy. Yes, it's very heavy. <laughs> yeah, this is the best one we had so far. And of course we have the white sink alloy. I like to play it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that we, that's the black one, but we didn't bring the black one. Yeah, so yeah. There, there's the microseconds average, and then also microseconds average. So ah. 4. Uh, 4.3 milliseconds and uh, 0. Uh, 0.68. Yeah, this is Uring, and yeah. this is competitive. Yeah. Competitive. <laughs> this is an older sample. Mm. Okay. Oh! You know Optimum Tech? Oh yeah! I so know! So this is going to be a collab with him. Ah, collaborate! Wow! Uh, we had like the nice call. I, I kind of like this one, I kind of dig it. Uh, if you've seen a lot of videos, it's always like black, white, gray. Yeah! Like, that's the style. Yeah! So this is too colorful. This is this simple one. edition, maybe. Yes! This is Optimum Tech. This is the first time I've been watching the content in the beginning. I think I'm going to make a case with the case. But now, Optimum Tech is a very simple and simple thing. I think this is very difficult. 원래 케이스에 비해서는 투박하네요. 어떻게 보면 원래 나온 알로마이즈 케이스 같은 경우는 얇고 좀 그런 게 있는데 이 친구는 그런 느낌은 아니긴 하네요. 괜찮네요. 이제 이게 이거 테스터기도 이제 갖고 있는 건데 이거 테스터기 같은 경우는 이제 OS를 안 쓰고 그냥 네이티브로 테스트하는 거다 보니까 근데 이것도 나름 괜찮긴 했어요. 테스트 결과 자체를 지금 보면은 표준 편차가 0.08 뭐그 정도 나오잖아요. 제가 이제 0.04가 이제 8K 이제 제 성능이 다 나오면은 표준 표제가 0.04 정도 나왔었고 이거면 한 4,000 정도가 아마 나오는 거지 않나 싶어요. 그리고 이제 여기가 이제 평균치 0.65 미리 셋건드죠. 그러면 이제 8K가 나오긴 하는 거죠. 이 정도 수치면은 베놈이랑 비슷한 베놈 구 버전 그거랑 비슷한 느낌인 것 같아요. You're gonna show off your skills? Oh. Ah. Yeah. Can I shoot? Oh, let me do snappy. It's all because you didn't have the headphones, of course. But yeah, yeah. Check what the settings were actually. This is like a L60, 45. Let's so. uh, check. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's yes. L60. 60. Yes. Uh, I think we pretty much finalized the switches. We're also working on like a custom switch mm. from ourselves. It's going to be like a whole new thing. Uh, also, all effect, of course. Mm. Um, but we don't have anything to share on that. Still, it's still uh, the early development stages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so far, what I've seen is pretty nice, but I uh, gotta check it out in when it's actually there, of course. Okay. I guess it's gonna be like, uh, I mean, we'll make up vi other videos about it. But I'll make a sound test and everything uh, yeah. on it as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you have like any questions written ah, down? Yeah, like, yeah. What you want to ask? Oh, ah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to ask those, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Some to show you all the products? Yes. And you yeah. also tried out some uh, Pelerin tests? Okay, yes. nice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, why did you develop this unique layout instead of TKL layout? 
Yeah. Yeah. Big question. Big question. Yeah, question. Yeah, big question. <laughs> Actually, when we when we started the development of the 80, it was a long time ago. We wanted to be early this time. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at layouts. And the question was, okay, is there a standard layout for the TKL? But uh, we found out, not really. Because mm -hmm. all the layouts for TKL, they all have their own way of assembly. So mm -hmm. even you make TKL layout, doesn't mean it will fit in a different case. You cannot mod it around. Because it will have different switch plate. It will mm -hmm. have a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they have daughter board. So we felt like, okay, we can do whatever we want. You know, we don't need to follow some standard. So then we start thinking, okay, what, why do people use TKL and what is they want, right? Mm -hmm. And from what we get from our end user, they want F row key, they want arrow key, right? That's it. We add the F row, right? And then it's like, okay, we add the F row and it's like, mm, there's a better F row, the F13 style, mm -hmm. right? That feels better because it's slightly closer to each other. It's a more chance to use more key. We can lower the height of the FO so it's closer to the rest of the keys, yeah. easier to reach, right? And we get an extra button above the backspace, which is perfect for like, it's isolated, right? Easy to reach, easy to recognize, to quickly press. Uh, so I felt that was better. And then the arrow key, you try to move it in, out, everywhere, right? And we have it upside down everywhere. And it's like, it always, always needs extra space on the right side. If it, was, if, uh, if it did not need the extra space, we would just you know, have no extra keys above, right? It would just only be the arrow key. But no matter how we do the arrow key, it needs the extra space. Um, and I had one requirement is I don't want to make special key cap. Because if I move the arrow key more in, then you get already the special right shift because that row is not standard. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I want end user, any end user, grab the keyboard, any keycap set they might have, maybe from five years ago, they can install on the keyboard, no problem. They don't need to think about it. Yeah, it can always fit. Yeah. So that's why we choose the arrow key to just remove a modifier key, place the arrow key, um, and then you just extra space. We bring in the navigation cluster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that creates this layout. And then why so critical about the this, this space, right? Yeah. yeah, why I want to try to get the arrow key in, right? Is because mouse space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody says, oh, TKL is better because you have more mouse space, and then 60, even better because more mouse space, right? So I think this is already about one centimeter, at least one centimeter less. Yeah. If you take a uh, full size, usually you use keyboard like this, right? Yeah. This whole space and your mouse really sucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now you need to start moving this way, right? Yeah. And then you start moving this way, yeah. right? And now you're using it like this. Yeah. Okay, now you want to type. Yeah. <laughs> right, so you need to bring it back here, right? And yeah, then it gets yeah. Very annoying, right? With 60, you don't have that problem, right? Yeah. And then with the 80, you want to have the same experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is then the TKL, right? Mm -hmm. But for us, it's actually a lot less here. So it means already a little bit less this way, mm -hmm. a little bit less of this, right? And just try to do this much as we can. So take TKL layouts, but fill the requirements and make it as good as we can. 75%, yeah? 75% yeah? has one big problem, mm -hmm. is when you look at the top row, the F row key and the uh, number key, they're all one on one, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so you try to reach one of these keys, yeah. good chance you also accidentally press the top one. Yeah. yeah. The reason why this gap is here is so you can know where the key location is. Mm. You don't need to look, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you take away the gap, it's very easy to mispress. Yeah. Mm. And same goes for the side. It's easy to mispress when you press enter, right? Then you might actually mm. press this key. I'm a right shift user. Yeah, yeah. I hate it that I need to <laughs> like move my finger more this way. Yeah. Right? So that's why also the navigation cluster, we just try to keep the gaps. Uh. Right? Do you plan to update the rapid snappy feature to other products? Yes. Yes. All the, every new feature we make, yeah. we try to implement into all our keyboards. The only reason we will not implement it is because either the hardware cannot make it, mm. it can be RAM, it can be the technology, right? Yeah. Mm. So even uh, Rapid Trigger, Wooting One, our yeah. keyboard from 2017, yeah. has Rapid Trigger. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I ha because I have it. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there any plans to a uh, cheaper version, Wooting and AK version, 6080? <laughs> I can tell you that what we will never do yeah. is make a keyboard that is focused on budget. Ah. Because yeah. as soon as you make a keyboard that is focused on budget, yeah. it means uh, create two problems. Problem one is we need to save cost, right? Yeah. Saving cost means saving a lot on performance, right? Saving a lot on performance also means we make a new feature, cannot put it on the budget ah. one. Yeah, and we want to keep, we just want to keep developing the best we can. So making something maybe middle range and yeah. high range, mm -hmm. yes, but never low what? range. Okay. Yeah. So the difference is mostly about layout, material, 
right? But the performance, we all try to keep the same. So the development can also just focus on the better, 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 better. Mm. Yeah. And then about 8K on the 60. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> went that a little we, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay, okay. Actually, when we uh, when we finished the uh, development of the 80, yeah. we want to implement it to 60. Mm -hmm. But the problem on the 60 layout is the PCB is very small. Yeah. Yeah, and we cannot fit everything. Mm. Yeah. So we need to use a different way. Yeah, and that takes time. And uh, yeah, we just don't know yet when okay. and what. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have just released it straight away because we can just copy what we do on the 80 and put it on the 60. Yeah. Mm. Currently, it is only served globally. Are there any plan to collaborate with overseas distributors to sell separately in the future? But this year, we're trying to expand more to work with reseller mm. in different countries. Yeah. Especially countries that are more difficult for us to, you know, give good shipping rates and uh, fast delivery. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about South Korea, right? Uh, we have also in China, it's very mm. challenging. Japan yeah. is challenging. And we're starting to work this year more and more with reseller to offer it locally. Yeah. But not a dis one distributor, just reseller. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, it used to be always like a thing, right? That we didn't have like a whole lot of stock. So we never thought about it because we want to always prioritize our own platforms. And now because stock is getting uh, 60 G's in stock right now, which yeah. is uh, surprising it actually happened, but it did. And uh, so now we, yeah, we start looking into it. Yeah. Yeah. So before we, the reason, yeah, the, like, so the main reason why we don't sell to the reseller really and don't really expand is because we have more demand than we can supply. So we our rule is we first mm -hmm. uh, fill the demand of our own website, our own platform. And once we do that and we have more supply, then we can add more of the visa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Does the Uring 80 HE have dead zone like the 60 HE? The dead zone in the 60 and the 80, right? Yeah. So actually, we, imp we released a software, yeah. uh, I think a week ago or two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Recently. Yeah. Recently, yeah. Where we made a huge improvements to our way of scanning mm -hmm. and filtering and uh, sensing, mm -hmm. right? So now with the 60 HE, in especially the beginning area, yeah. it's now more sensitive than oh. before. Yeah. So also vapor trigger, for example, we can go lower than the 0 0.15 if we want to. Mm. Uh, and in the beginning area, you can find also, uh, we don't have the tester now, but yeah. Yeah, you'll find also that actually the dead zone area is very, very small. Oh. Yeah. So there's also a latency is better now uh, with the new update. And then with the 80, we already implemented it before. Yeah. So and this is we're always working on the firmware. Mm. And it's the same with the features. If we can do better, we make it better, we release it to all the keyboard. Mm. Yeah. But I can tell you that uh, when it comes to the sensitivity of the switch yeah. and the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, right? Maybe some keyboard will say 0.05, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you really test it, yeah, it's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the second is that uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, right? But the return of the difference gets very small. Small. Yeah. Then it's better to focus on other parts. Yeah. Sometimes you have, for example, when it comes to how the latency, right? Yeah. And if you do 0 0.05, right? It's very, very sensitive, right? Yeah. But also, because very, very sensitive, you need to use a lot of filtering. Mm. Make sure no accident press, right? Yeah. So maybe actually increase latency because you need to use extra filtering to make sure it doesn't activate. Yeah. Last question. It's all right. Yeah, all yeah. Right. You take your time. Ah, I'm, okay. I'm standing here all day. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The PCB of the 80 HE is not fixed the housing's bottom like the 60 HE. Right. Does this cause any issue with sensor lack of collision yeah. being misaligned or inaccurate? Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, since you released the module using yeah. the PC plate, yeah. the PC plate are very more flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So we put the silicone underneath, make it more stiff. Oh. But you can also put the foam underneath, and then we'll still have a little bit more flex. Mm -hmm. And then with the 80, even though it has the gasket mount, yeah, yeah. when you press down, and we have the PC plate and the silicone, actually, there's not a lot of single area flexing. Mm -hmm. Because the PCB is still no cuts, ah. yeah, stiff. Yeah. That said though, the real trick is about calibration mm -hmm. and um, continuous calibration. Mm -hmm. So what we, we do with the latest update also is while you're using the keyboard, 
it always will check. Your start will calibrate starting point, calibrate ending point, calibrate starting point, calibrate ending point. So we can also make sure even if you're using scenario changes, right, uh, we can adapt very quickly. Uh, and until so far, uh, we don't have accidental presses because of the construction. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, done. Yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> I mean, if you come up with something on the on the, the meanwhile, you know, just yeah. go by, ask, go ahead. It's fine. Oh, ah, okay. This is Putin. 그러니까 레커 원버전 같은 경우는 워블이 심해서 사실 유저들도 좀 불편해하는 사람들이 있다. 근데 이제 투 거의 제가 지금 손가락으로 느꼈을 때는 제가 썼던 로우 H보다는 좀 덜하긴 한데 그래도 상당히 유격이 많이 줄이. 아 근데 이것부터 조금 더 좋아지면 좋을 것 같은데 이게 이게 지금 파이널이 들어가 있는 건지 모르겠어요. 아까 저기 블랙 썼을 때는 좀더 적은 느낌이었었는데. 아닌가 비슷한가? 아닌데 좀더 적은 느낌인데 아닌가 비슷한 거 같고 비슷한 거 같고 다음에 보면 또 정확한 테스트를 확실히 간지나긴 하네 확실히 그 유명이 돼야 저런 콜라보를 근데 사실 60H 초창기 났을 때부터 거의 본인 영상에서 막 좋다 좋다 그걸 엄청 했어가지고 사실 그 영향도 있을 거라 판매고에 아 가죠 Yeah. Go now. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. 거의 영상 한 편인데요, 그냥. 예, 진짜 한 편인데 단독으로 올려도 될 정도인데요, 이거. 응. And I never heard back from him. Then on the question. Why company name is Wooten? Actually, Wood. Maybe in the 90s. Used to be we own the other team. Ah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that was used in a tournament, Quake yeah. uh, tournaments a lot. But then it kind of disappeared, and some people start shouting like "woot" as like a happy way, right? But they don't really know what it means, right? And uh, with my friends, uh, we start playing a game, and uh, we also start uh, something that time, and we're like, "Oh, we are always woot." So. Continuously owning Reality other team, booting. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, if you ask uh, one of my co-founders, then uh, the logo, you think it's maybe a W with a crown shape, right? Mm. But actually, uh, it's the E from Eric. That's his name. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's serious. Oh. I didn't even know that.